Mages. I never played them in D&D. I came to D&D through the animated Lord of the Rings, which was a very cut-down version of the first two books. For its day, however, it was excellent. John Hurt as Aragorn was simply amazing and became the blueprint for many a young D&D ranger. I liked sword and bow. I fenced. I did Eido. Swordplay I very much enjoyed. Magic was never the thing that grabbed my imagination, so I was happily painting everything except mages, until I picked up some commissions at a local store to do some minis for a customer. I don't charge a lot of money, as people are looking for a table piece and not a display shelf one, but in that mix there were some mages. I admit I didn't always know how to approach mages. A lot of images I saw were extreme, either basic drab earthy functional colour schemes or insanely complex ones. I have tried, for most of them, to land somewhere in between. I don't hold to the idea that a fire mage will automatically wear red robes, though that wouldn't be a bad idea. Also, a couple of them came from the same person, and so I didn't want to paint them in the same palette. This mini itself is one of their metal range, and is from the Pathfinder RPG line. Overall, I like it, but I do have some mixed feelings. The detail is very nice. It's subtle and defined, which is really cool. Things like the face and the hair around the hood. These areas can be very exaggerated on some minis, but here it's pretty natural. The robe is simple in its design, but very well executed. The folds in the skirt part are brilliant. It hangs and folds naturally, and goes a long way to making this figure feel not a cartoon. She is also wearing a half cape. This was a nice extra bit of cloth. The figure was fine without it, but at the same time, it could feel a little simplistic in its clothing. This one additional feature does add an extra layer, which is cool. The staff has a nice wood design. The head is a little overdone for my taste, but that is just my personal aesthetic. It has a very nice weight to the mini, and the square base is large and very well balanced. It keeps the mini from easily falling over. Now, the only thing I don't like is the spell effect. It's not that it isn't done well. This is something I generally do not like. Flaming swords, spell effects, etc. It isn't so much that it takes away choice. You know the figure you're getting, so it wouldn't be a surprise. But rather, my problem becomes one of focal point. Now, normally painters decide that for themselves. Really good painters often choose the face, but it can depend. A really cool armoured warrior, you might push the armour. On a barbarian, you might push the skin. Others, a sword, big animal fur cloak, and so on. When there are spell effects, they tend, by default, to take up a decent amount of miniature real estate, and with that, focus. I had recently done some grey minis as the dude wanted neutral alignment, so I decided to go colour this time. I went with a blue, and having looked online, several painters had gone with the idea of painting the bottom of the dress a different colour. I liked that idea, so I went with black. I then worked the black into the sleeves and cape. I dry brushed a dark blue over the cape to give the impression it was a super dark blue. I went with a normal brown for the staff, but you can mix the colours of staffs up a bit. But I prefer to do that when the mini's colours are more downplayed. I tried to not overdo the spell effect as I wanted the blue of the dress to be the most important part. So I went with one of Games Workshop's undead line of paints. I went with a mud base as if she was fighting in a desperate line of defence rather than a more controlled environment. This mini is available from Reaper Miniatures and it's under $7, so it's definitely a good deal.